What's up YouTube? Time itself here taking a look at Destiny's new competitive multiplayer game type, Control. At first glance, Control looks to be just like Call of Duty's domination game type. You've got three points on the map, you run around and try and capture them. But unlike Call of Duty or similar domination game types, you get points for kills, not for the length of time you hold the capture points. A kill on its own is worth 100 points, but depending on how many control points you have, you'll get more points per kill. With one flag, it's an extra 50 points. With two, it's an extra 100. With all three, 200 extra points per kill. So if you were just going to trade 150 point kills for 200 point kills, and stick with the classic Call of Duty, hold two flags and keep the enemy on the third, your team would have to have over a .75 KD in order to win that game still. In COD Domination, holding two flags for the entire game ensures you basically double the enemy's score and have a comfortable win. That's not the case with Control and Destiny. Of course, holding all three flags means you're trading 300 point kills for 100 point kills, and you only need to manage a KD as a team just over one third. Of course, I'm oversimplifying things here. You get points lots of other ways. Anything special you can ascribe to that kill you just got, be it headshots with heavy weapon, with your super, you'll get more points for that stuff. But there is one way in control to get points that's not associated with killing someone, and that's taking the capture points, either neutralizing them for 25 points or capturing them for 75. Each player on your team who's on the point when that happens will generate that many points for the team. So at the start of a game, when three of your team members capture that first point, they'll each generate 75 points for the team or 225 points to start things out. So the more friendlies on flags when your team takes them, the more points for your team. Of course, you also risk bunching up and getting hit with AoE stuff. There are also more points awarded for killing people on flags or from flags. All in all, Control does a good job of bringing the focal point of the combat to the flags and not just the heavy ammo spawns. Okay, okay, enough theory. How do things actually work out? Well, the first thing I would note is that because the flags can be neutralized, a lot of the time, not all three flags are held. So oftentimes, both teams will have one flag, or they'll trade back and forth as to who has two flags, it's just the way the game kind of flows around most of the maps. Also, because of the way you get so many extra points associated with kills for headshots and whatnot, it doesn't make nearly as much of a difference as it would if the extra points were awarded just for having flags. Now, it's still nice to get a kill when you've got two flags as opposed to one, but that .75 KD figure I quoted earlier, yeah, it's nowhere near that low. There's one other source of points that I haven't explicitly mentioned yet, and that's assists. At 50 points a pop, an assist is basically the difference between holding one flag and two flags. I went onto Bungie's website and pulled the stats for my last dozen control games, the kills, assists, and score of all the players on both the winning and losing teams. Games are to 20,000 points, and a winning team typically has 80 some odd kills, which means uh, if points are just from kills, Kill alone is, on average, worth more than 200 points. The team with more kills almost always won. The dozen games I pulled, that was true except in two cases. And the most extreme deficit a team overcame was six kills, and that's the end of the game you're watching right now. My team was down some 2,500 points in this game, and we managed to come back. Though we still never overcame that kill deficit we, uh, we established early on. Now, despite being down 6 kills, we were up 14 assists. I think that's one of the big reasons we managed to pull off the comeback. And I think it also explains one of the more crushing defeats we had. The enemy team had 53 assists on 83 kills. So in control, sticking together with your team, picking up those assists, seems like a pretty sound strategy. That's probably a big reason why when you see a team playing together, they'll often just stick with each other and train around the map from one flag to the next, just going in a big circle. That works out fairly well when the flags are in a triangle and not in a line like they are here. And here we end up holding just uh, A and B, and they never get behind us to A, and they just keep coming at us from C one at a time, and we're ready for it. And we managed to make this comeback. I was kind of surprised. I was really worried we were going to lose this one. Part of me really wonders how carefully tuned a lot of those extra point values are. For example, 10 points for a headshot, one-tenth of a kill? Uh, maybe they don't want to weight headshots too importantly because they already are really important. Uh, still, I just a lot of the times I wonder, why did they choose that value for that particular action? 
Given that they use the same point values in Clash, the TDM mode, I wouldn't be surprised to see some additional tuning in those values uh, during the game's lifespan. Yes, I am just holding on to my super because I want to spite the Blade Dancers. That's what I ended up doing in this game. <laughs> Anyway, for an example of a close game on a map with the flags in a triangle formation, in this game we ended up down by one kill and five assists, but still managed to come back again. And that's going to just be holding the flags uh, and all the extra points from all the other random places you can get them from. They're just they're too many to count, and if I tried, I'd miss some, or they'd add them in later. It, do it doesn't matter. They're just too many different ways to get points to keep track of them all. One thing that kind of surprised me. I don't know why, I just thought it was odd, is that the losing team often got right around 60 kills, where the winning team would get 80-some, the losing team would get 60. I'm not sure why. I don't know what's going on with matchmaking in Destiny. I just thought it was something I would note. And that 60 kills corresponds to roughly 12, 13,000 points. The winning team typically had more points per kill, but not always. And at most, the difference was 60-some-odd points per kill on average in favor of the winning team, or in some cases, 20-something uh, for the losing team. That seems surprising. The losing team is getting more points per kill, but just has so many fewer kills that they can't make up that deficit. I guess what that says is that if you want the crushing uh, victory medal, where you double the enemy team's score, you want to either, well, just capture all three points and hold them, or get much, much higher KDs than all the enemies. Oh, and that little clip at the start of the video, here it is. You're in the lead. So Control does do a good job of making those flags important. I've been really glad to see that for the most part, everybody's been playing the objective trying to capture the flags. However, getting kills and not dying is probably still the easiest way to win this game type. Oh, and don't do this. Don't run into a flag where you know there are two enemies on your own. <laughs> I almost lost the game for my team there. That was really silly. It's okay. We managed to pull out the win here. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Hopefully, it's more Destiny content out before too long, and I'll see you then.